in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. May I request also that we'll read it together? It's projected. Ready? One to read. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. One more time. If thou, just, just verse 10. If thou faint, The Bible acknowledges that there is a day called the day of adversity. What a caption for a day. Are we together now? The Bible says that there is a possibility and that every believer for as long as you sojourn long enough in this space called the earth, you will collide with a day in your experience called the day of adversity. He tells you what you need is not to pray the day away necessarily. What you need is to build momentum for that day. Because the factor that will bail you out on that day is not avoiding the day. is having strength. So this is, this is an issue of strength. Not just running away from the day. That if you faint in the day of battle, he says it is because your strength is small. Not because of the day something about the the insufficiency of your strength can make that day scar you and destroy you even for the rest of your life adversity speaks of misfortune adversity speaks of hardship adversity speaks of challenges mishap adversity speaks of continual difficulty the bible leaves us very in a very very vocal expression the bible tells us that for as long as you live long enough in the earth whether you like it or not that it seasons will come in your life when you will experience different levels of discomfort for different reasons and the bible lets us know that in the journey of life and destiny in this faith adventure strength is necessary not just knowledge knowledge is important but a time will come when what you need is strength are we together in proverbs in, in ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 apostle paul was teaching the church in ephesus and he said that he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man why would paul be talking to the church those who are already saved about the need for strength to be strengthened in your inner man because there is a limitation in all men are we together and that limitation was clearly it was it was clearly expressed in the bible in the book of isaiah chapter 40 please turn with me quickly to isaiah 40 for the sake of time i will just take 29 and 30. in fact let's let's start from 28. isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28 has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. Now, he's giving you an information about God because he's about to contrast it with something that man does not have. 
that this God does not have the ability to faint. Number two, that God is not weary. Two things he's telling you is not found in God. God does not faint and God is not weary. The Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. Now, verse 29, he says he giveth power to the faint. He doesn't tell us who that person is. But whoever is that person who is in that state, he's already giving you hope that there is a bailout system. That every time you faint, he gives power, not counsel, not advice. When you faint, it is not knowledge you need necessarily. You need strength. He giveth power to the faint. And to him that have no might, he increaseth. 30. Even the youth shall faint. This is a very serious statement. Because the glory of the young people is in their strength. And he's telling you, for as long as you sojourn in this life, the wear and tear of living will catch up with you regardless the advantage of age. That even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Then he leaves you with a secret. That they that wait upon the Lord, Parakoskiata, something happens to their strength he uses a strange expression renew that means it was once there but something happened he does not say he gives you strength that he renews your strength and he does it in a way that you can mount up with wings as the eagles that when you master the technology of renewal you can run and when men think you should be weary, they find out mysteriously you never get weary. And when you should walk, you would not faint. He's saying under normal circumstances, it's impossible to walk so fast, so journeying in life without being weary and without fainting. But he introduces a technology that you can tap into a spiritual technology that makes you behave like God in experience. That when others are weary and when they are fainting, you are standing by a strength and an intelligence. Weariness talks of exhaustion. Weariness talks of discouragement. Believe me when I tell you all it takes is for you to live long enough on this earth. And you will know that weariness is a cross that all mortal men must carry when jesus became a man he tasted of weariness and the bible does not hide it as god there was no mention of weariness but the moment he became a man your bible tells you one day he was hungry and he went to the tree he did not advise the tree yet he's god that is love he caused that tree why hunger hunger was the reason behind that cause not a demonic activity he's standing before a tree that lured him and he came there and finding no fruit where did he keep his mercy where did he keep his love and you see the bible does not hide these experiences because he wants you to know god holy there is a dimension of god that if the bible hides you will not know god accurately then the bible records his frustration he looks at his disciples and says, will you also leave? And they say, to whom shall we go? And he finds comfort from that statement. Then he gets to a point, follow carefully. Jesus gets to a point where carrying the cross and the burden of the, the enormity of the work that was on him. The Bible says Jesus himself turned to the father and was negotiating. He was not sleepy. He was not drunk. With his intelligence, he said, Father, I am God, but I'm not ashamed to negotiate. Do you know what pain can do? Pain can get you to a point where your reputation does not matter again. You are so conscious of solutions, even if it will destroy you. Jesus, I hope we're learning tonight. Hmm. Father, if it be thy will, as though they did not discuss it. This was something that was finished already in heaven. He was just here to execute it. And now he's renegotiating everything. Take this cup from off me. I'm tired. I'm not the one who sinned. And he remembered. 
He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You would think that would be the end of the frustration. I'm explaining weariness using Jesus as the reference. Jesus is hanging on the tree and you would think he would be singing praise and worship. At least even when they were killing Stephen the Messiah, Stephen did not complain, but Jesus was there. And he was not concerned about what men said, but when he looked up and saw that the father turned his face, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. Why will you turn your face against me? I understand men, but you? Jesus. If we do not understand the reality of exhaustion and weariness, it can so affect our faith. Because you see, there is a dimension of faith that is being taught in the body of Christ that looks very spiritual but is incorrect. And it has not given people a chance to understand God wholly. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. There is a dimension of there are seasons that are uncomfortable but you see there are requirements for greatness and if you use the guise of faith to just erode those seasons people will never know God completely and they will never be people of stature and balance there is a requisite level of pain there is a requisite level you must taste of certain seasons to qualify you to carry certain graces now, this is a language that our generation does not want to hear. All using the guise of faith. Let me apologize in advance because we are going to rush. So there are many people who try to wave seasons away. Jesus himself, when it had to do with ranking and increase, they asked him a question. We want to sit at your left and right. He didn't say the seat was not vacant. He said there is a condition. Can you drink of my cup? And be baptized with my baptism there are people today who want uncommon anointings they want uncommon influence they want to stand in the shoes and the offices of people and most people want to get it by claiming not everything is a gift there are things that are rewards the Bible says to him that endures he will be given a crown and a white stone endurance There is a lot of admiration of people who God is doing mighty things with. And, and people just make it look as though it was just something that they were lucky, just a gift. I, believe me, if you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, you will find strength. Hmm. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed. Ah. Who seen that this man was born blind? It was a question they asked Jesus. Was it him or was it his father? Listen to the reply of Jesus. Neither. But this has happened that the glory of God. Is it in your Bible? Oh my goodness. Is that how far God is willing to go for his glory to be revealed? That a man is born blind? And Jesus, who is the manifestation of the glory of the Father, is telling you that God so desires for his glory to be revealed that he can create all kinds of scenarios provided it will provide glory. God does not regret it. Your name is to be hallowed. Psalm 27 from verse 13 and 14. Please let's rush. I really believe with all my heart that this message is giving someone perspective. It's opening you up to something. For some of you, it is possible that you are in these seasons right now. And you want to know, is it an attack? Is it a test? What is give a definition to this season? And then help me know if I should just stay and endure. Should I fight it? Should I receive it? Should I learn from it? I had fainted unless 
I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. And he shall strengthen your heart. But here is your own condition. Wait. When Pastor Nat came up and began to sing that song about waiting, I said, this man. Wait on the Lord and you will find strength. Let me give you three biblical reasons for weariness. Now that we have established that weariness is something that spirituality does not automatically take away. Provided you wear a mortal body, it is a tendency that will eventually catch up with you. As we learn from the life of Jesus, who is our reference and our standard. If Jesus were, were weary as a child, we would give him that excuse. But Jesus was weary at the height of everything in his life. What is the first cause of weariness? I wrote down here, disappointed expectations. Please write it down. Disappointed expectations. Proverbs 13 and verse 12. The first reason why believers and even spiritual people can become weary in this faith adventure. My Bible says hope deferred can make the heart sick if it was just the body that was sick you can go to the hospital to treat it but now he's telling you that this sickness will go beyond your body that hope deferred can make the heart sick but when the desire cometh, it is the tree of life disappointed expectations we all desire results in our lives we all desire results that bring glory to the name of the Lord and become consolations to our Christian experience. In fact, psychologists tell us that one of the keys to fulfillment is progress, a sense of progress. To the degree to which we make constructive advance with our lives, we find fulfillment. Is that true? Disappointed expectations. Number two, the second reason why believers can be wary is attacks persecutions and tribulation james chapter 1 i'll read from verse 1 to 4 attacks persecution tribulation james chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 here's what it says james a servant and all of that he greets you and then let's start from verse 2 he said my brethren who is he talking to He's talking to people who are of the fold that you count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3, knowing this, there is an information he wants you to know that can grant you the ability to even count it all joy. He says that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, he says, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire. Now, that word entire is interesting. That for you to be whole, there is a requisite, there is an administration of tribulation and adversity that works together to make you entire. That means without that in the equation of your faith adventure, you are incomplete. There is something about your life and your knowledge of God that is not yet complete. One thing nothing first peter chapter 4 let's read from verse 12 first peter chapter 4 and verse 12 Shabakuski beloved again think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you he says as though some strange thing happened to you He's saying you are people of faith, but factor this in your faith adventure. He says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye might be glad also with exceeding joy. We're reading to 16. He says, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you, 
on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified it says but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters 16 it says yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf very strange scripture yet it is in the bible attacks persecutions tribulations number three very quickly what is the third reason why people experience weariness sorrow sorrow as simple as that sorrow let me define for you what sorrow is sorrow is a feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses disappointments misfortune etc a feeling of deep distress caused by losses caused by disappointments caused by misfortune it could lead to depression it could lead to sadness i'm sure that apostle good had to concur to this alongside the servants of god here represented i believe that every man of god would have an average of one situation requiring his help at least every day a bereavement somewhere something you can wake up to several text messages apostle something just happened apostle this one happened my son just died i lost a, a, a very touching story from a family a few weeks ago a woman who went to give birth with joy and gave birth and died had twins and died there and they prayed and prayed from the house and they were ministers of the gospel now how do you explain that these are the kinds of moments that unbelievers love because they cash in the devil will ride through it and say is this how god rewards those who serve him twins lovely babies and now the woman died very it was a painful experience for the family there is no day that i do not have the privilege and the opportunity of sharing the pain and attempting to give perspective to negative issues around the lives of sincere people are we learning sorrow there are issues in the lives of people that you stand and even as a man of God, you stretch your intelligence, you open from Genesis to Revelation and you honestly cannot find an answer. The only thing you may be tempted to say is give thanks. And that give thanks, you don't say it immediately. You just sing a song and pray in tongues and hope that the Holy Ghost who is the comforter would minister to them and then you can come back later because the situations defy explanation. Are we together? When people have to pay the price because of their integrity or their love for God, when people lose loved ones, I know people who died of diseases and they were quoting scripture till their last breath. How do you explain that kind of occurrence? And yet, whilst they were sick on the sick bed, they had propositions from tradition and all kinds of things. Leave that church thing and come, let's help you. We know what is wrong with you. And they said, for my integrity, I will stand. And yet they died. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. You see, as I teach, you will be understanding this song. It's easy to sing in the morning of your destiny. When the sun is just rising, you are naive about so many things. You've not gone through anything. Your stamina is when you sing in the evening too. If the evening still catches you singing, you are mature. It takes, it takes skill to sing in the morning, but it takes strength to sing in the evening. I'm raising that song for you for a reason. From the rising of the sun, with your naivety and ignorance, and ignorance can be an advantage. You are light enough to shout. But by the time it is the evening season of your life, you are in a straight betwixt whether to sing that he is faithful or not. If you still call him faithful, it took more than vocal prowess. You are strong. Haven't lost family members. Haven't lost your job. Haven't lost several things. 
Spend your life explaining God's faithfulness and yet your results does not seem to catch. And yet you still join those who are rejoicing to sing. Now you understand what the Spirit of God gave us through Pastor Nat's song. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. job was one man whose life remains a lesson for us a man who lost everything in one day and then the bible tells us on top of that his health was affected the wealthiest man became a lesson for many people I'm sure others will say what, however you got that money, God is judging you now. I'm sure there will be a prophet who will prophesy and say, I saw this thing happening. And yet he kept quiet. Job got to a point where he was frustrated. And he said, though he slay me. Listen to me, you don't sing in the evening with skill. It takes strength. Nevertheless, nevertheless your name be lifted i am burying my loved one but i still stand upon my integrity that you are the giver of life and when men ask you and say do you still keep your conviction in the midst of your pain like job you can tell them god is greater that all the days of my appointed time i will wait read your bible and see what the bible calls faith women who receive their dead to life and others who died without receiving the promise he gathered all and called it faith several people entered this year with all kinds of pains and disappointment there are pastors bleeding there are business people bleeding i understand where we just rejoice and say don't worry but there are people asking questions when they go back home God are you still there and for many if they do not encounter the truth from conferences like this the devil will cash in upon their ignorance and tell them it means something is wrong with you but I bring back that statement who sinned that this man was born blind it is not always about sin not him nor his father but that the glory of God be revealed How can God allow a man go through affliction for glory? Ask Jesus. What is the relationship between the cross and the crown on his head? Are you blessed now? That you go through seasons and there is like a fetcher. There is something about God you carry out of that season. That when you come out of it, it gives you the ranking in the spirit. That although you are a miracle worker, you can stand in a place where there is bereavement and you still have a sermon. There are people who do not have any sermon when they meet those who are downcast. The sermon is only for those who are looking for... There are times you will be forced to preach a sermon to people who are crying. Do you have that sermon? You don't study it from your Bible. You fetch it from your own pain. sorrow a deep feeling of pain most times when people die people reach me so that we can try and pray for them and see if they come back to life and honestly you cannot imagine how painful it can be sometimes that you sincerely love people and they they and the people have faith you can't say they don't have faith what else is faith? They woke up in the morning and rang your phone 30 times. Is that not faith? And said, I know if you speak a word, my dead husband or father will come back to life. People lost their businesses. And some of them will say, Apostle, I sowed seeds. I built churches. Can I tell you? You're a minister of the gospel here. <clears throat> don't be embarrassed if you don't have all the answers. You are not God. Don't feel ashamed if you don't have all the answers. It's not an indictment on your knowledge of God. There are times that silence is the answer. There are times joy is the answer. 
there are times your song given your tears can be the answer church is quiet let's try that song again from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed not from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed keys to revival from weariness that a man can be revived so that he can now be a conduit that brings comfort succor revival The seasons that you are now passing in, for some of you, that season will become your trophy tomorrow. Do not run away from scars. What is a token of shame today may be your symbol of honor tomorrow. When you get to heaven, one of the ways you know that this is Jesus is by looking at the hands of everybody. Whoever does not have a scar on his hand is not Jesus. He's not the only one who has a crown. Elders have crowns. But check the one who has a scar. There are times when we come and God sends us to you. We are not looking for your sermon. Show me your scar. That is the key to your honor. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I pass through that season. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an illegal immigrant, if I would use that expression. Number one, the first key that is able to revive you from these seasons of weariness and these supposed inexplicable seasons. Number one, a revelation of the love of God. The first key that sponsors strength and stamina and revival to the weary is a revelation of the love of God. Three scriptures very quickly. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. The Bible clearly tells us, verse 1, we'll just keep it there, that we are the sons of God and that God showed the extent of his love by making us sons. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, it's been an anthem in my life, a very powerful scripture that I have loved you, Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old to me saying, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with my loving kindness have I drawn you. The consciousness of the love of God is a strengthener. When you know that God loves you and that his jealousy is ever before you, it can grant you strength even in the midst of these seasons. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8, 28. It says, all things work together for the good of them that love God. This is a love affair. And to them who are the called according to his purposes. All things, doesn't matter what it is. The Bible says it sustains the ability to work together. So the first key to revival from weariness is a revelation of the love of God. Key number two, I call it the comfort of scripture. The comfort of scripture. What betides a man who is far from scripture during these seasons? Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, it says they were written for our learning, that we through patience 
and the comfort of scripture might find hope scripture is not just for information scripture is also for comfort you know how you get comfort from scripture when you see what happened before to the saints and you see how God brought them out, it can minister comfort to you. The Bible says that was why it was written. It's not always about information. It's also so that you can draw strength. That when you go through seasons that you cannot explain, you remember Jesus. You remember Joseph. You remember the nation of Israel. You remember all of these people and you can find strength. Strength for that journey. Psalm 119 and verse 28. Psalm 119 and verse 28. Psalm 119 and verse 28. It says, My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to your word. My soul melted for heaviness. But strengthen thou me according to your word. The word of God is powerful. It is able to give you strength. Number three, what is the key to revival from weariness and from these unfavorable seasons? Strategic prayers. Strategic prayers. Strategic prayers. Psalm 34 from verse 4 to 7, very popular scripture. Psalm 34 from verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. God does not just deliver men from trouble. He delivers them from fears too. Next verse. They looked unto him and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6. It says the poor man cried and the Lord heard them. And saved him out of all his troubles. The last verse 7. It says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And he delivered them. Prayer is powerful. Psalm 61 from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 61 from verse 1 to 4. Hear my cry, O God, he says. Attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. It says, from the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. It says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The last verse. It says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in thy covet, the covet of thy wings. This is the psalmist praying. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4 from verse 6 and 7. Please write it down. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, he says, let your requests be made known unto God. Next verse. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. It is in the place of prayer that you are able to exchange your pain, your confusion for the peace of God. And the Bible says that peace surpasses all understanding. It is able to build a garrison around your mind and around your heart. Are we learning now? That's key number three, strategic prayer. That every time you find yourself in seasons in your faith adventure, seasons that are unfavorable, you engage strategic prayers. Number four, are you ready? The fourth key is joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. We'll look at three scriptures very quickly. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Popular scripture. The B part says, For the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Not the joy from your results. The joy of the Lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength second corinthians chapter 12 second corinthians chapter 12 from verse 9 9 and 10 this was apostle paul he said unto me this was his discourse with god when he was afflicted buffeted thrice he said my grace is sufficient for thee he said, for my strength is made perfect or manifest in weakness. 
most gladly therefore i would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak mysteriously i am strong Are we together? The joy that comes Philippians 4 and verse 4 Philippians 4 and verse 4 Philippians 4 and verse 4 It says rejoice in the Lord always Not just always Always Another word is all seasons. Again, I repeat, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. How in the world do you rejoice in the face of a threatening medical result? How do you rejoice in the face of bills before you? How do you rejoice in the face of obvious, negative and uncomfortable situations? The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice popular scripture habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 we're about to pray habakkuk chapter 3 beginning from verse 17 it says although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. I like the next word. Yet. Don't worry, don't worry, don't rush it. Yet. All of those things. Yet. This would be my response. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. 19. He says... The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. That in spite of everything that has happened, my response, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Your name is to be hallowed. Ah, your name is to be hallowed. Ah, Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.